you as well uh, later on to those of you who registered in advance. Yeah, so that's uh, that's started. And uh, yeah, so before we kick it off, I guess I'd like to see a raise of hands who's uh, participated in the Coder.Darrier skilling AI. Nana. OK, who raise a hand if you are certified with AI 900? Awesome, I see. Yeah, majority I see our uh, our AI 900. Uh, yeah, me too. Me too. I'm a proud, uh, proud bearer of AI 900 certificate. And um, thanks to I would actually say thanks to Miss Priyanka as well, because I've listened in on some of her trainings and uh, that's some of her amazing MVP work that she's uh, contributed. And um, so more about what is code without barriers. Let me let me show this brief uh, video to all of you. I hope you can uh, see uh, see and hear my screen. Good without barriers create equitable opportunities and breaks barriers to achieve gender parity. We are a coalition of allies for developer diversity organization and within industry so that every country can have truly inclusive economic growth. The big difference we can make is starting with the current business leaders and individuals to educate them about diversity and in particular about potential gender biases in the workplace. Well, it is vital to embrace all perspectives regardless of gender. That is a mature and is not only have a seat at the table, but more importantly, a voice. The key is access. We need for female mentors to inspire girls um, to pursue career in STEM. We also need for female sponsors in organisations to promote ladies into senior tech positions. Ensuring that there is an inclusive, open and an encouraging environment when people can discuss and can be guided will ensure that there is a growth ecosystem set in place for them. Well, at GBDI, we give equal opportunities for all genders to take different roles in the agency. I mean, women can experience being team leaders, project managers, data scientists, developers, just virtually no limit to what they can do. We can all make a difference in our organizations by championing women in tech, nurturing their growth, by building diverse and inclusive workplaces. Our progress in diversity does not happen by chance. We have to make a concerted effort to make the change together. Encouraging development at all levels, regardless of gender, via upskilling training opportunities. Through our partnerships, it will be possible. But together, we will bring the perspectives, assumptions, and understanding of the campus strengths. Equal opportunities and competency building, and the right exposure to harness the best of their abilities. Well, AI need training data labeled by humans so learn how to make decisions. So I guess uh, I'll change this one up to, yeah. So I think, I hope all of you got an insight why we need more female representation and why we need uh, more ladies to be included in, in the tech space. So that's what Code Without Barriers initiative does. And uh, yeah, we're honored to have, yeah, actually Priyanka is an an amazing example of uh, where Code Without Barriers initiative can take you. And I hope she'll share more on that uh, later on. And uh, so without um, further ado, I would like to invite Elizabeth and uh, Mr. Deepak to share more on uh, personal branding and how the Microsoft MVP nomination can help you on that. Elizabeth, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, I've just shared my screen, so if I can just uh, just get an OK that you can see it, um, and then I will kick start with the presentation. Yes, we can see it. Perfect. Now, I had issues before changing slides, so um, let me know if the slide doesn't change. Um, but yeah, I'd love to introduce myself um, as a community program manager at Microsoft. I work alongside my colleague Deepak, um, who is um, on the call as well. Um, Deepak's in transit. He had um, a family um, kind of emergency that he needed to attend to today, but everything's okay. Um, but he still wanted to be here. So he is um, off camera 
um, but he's in transit and he will be presenting um, at the end. So Deepak, did you just want to say hi? Hey Elizabeth. Hey, um, hey. hey everyone. Thank you for um, uh, thank you for having me on the call despite my uh, my situation. But uh, like Elizabeth mentioned, everything is good. Um, I just had something unavoidable in the family, but uh, I'm so happy to be here. I didn't want to pass up the opportunity to to talk to all of you. So please excuse me being off camera. But other than that, I'm fully here and happy to um, you know to talk to you further about the MVP program and take any questions. Thank you. Yeah. And um, so thanks, Deepak. And we both look after the Southeast Asia region. So um, my my countries that I lead in particular include Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, and Indonesia. And um, Deepak, um, I know you're based in India and um, you look after some other Southeast Asia countries. So did you want to just touch on what they are as well? Sure. Uh, so my countries include India and all the neighboring countries that share the same time zone. So that includes uh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Maldives, uh, Bangladesh, and uh, some parts of Middle East as well. Uh, it also includes Maldives. Um, and uh, we're looking for uh, uh, we're looking for more representation in terms of uh, the smaller uh, regions around India. But essentially, these are the, the countries. So anything that shares the time zone with India and is uh, is geographically neighboring us. Fantastic. Yeah. So I guess Deepak and I have a really awesome role at Microsoft and we really get to empower communities um, who do really amazing um, things with their communities and, and make um, great impact um, and share um, help people share um, knowledge about Microsoft products and services, um, but then also helping to make a difference. So um, we look after the MVP community in particular, which is really exciting. So today I'm just going to touch on um, just the concept of personal brand, because if we want to look at, um, you know, what it takes to be an MVP, I think we really need to take a step back and say, and look at how does someone get to become an MVP? And um, there's um, a correlation, I believe, with personal brand. So um, hopefully I can inspire you about um, how to be more mindful and conscious about your own personal brand. And maybe it might lead to um, yeah, new opportunities and it could even lead to an MVP award. And so Deepak will touch on the MVP award a little bit later today. But um, yeah, so personal brand, we've probably heard it in some sort of context, but um, essentially, um, personal brand is important because it's an asset that you own. And um, ultimately, your personal brand is how people perceive you. And um, believe it or not, we all have a personal brand, whether we know or not, but you have a personal brand with your family, with your friends, with your colleagues, even in an online presence. Um, so it's really about the reputation um, that you create and I think that's really cool because you have control over how people perceive you. So, um, yeah, I think it's really up to us with, you know, how we put ourselves out there into the community and um, the opportunities I think that could create through our own personal brand. So this is the question that um, I'll put out there, but what do you want to be known for? And uh, yeah, maybe it's an expert in AI. Maybe you want to be a thought leader in that space, or maybe you want to be the next mentor at Code Without Barriers, or you want to be an MVP, or um, you know, you might have other goals and aspirations. But I really believe that personal brand can really help you there, help you get there. Sorry. So, what is personal brand? And um, there's a, a quote here that I've got from Neil Patel, and he's a famous online marketer. And um, I, I love how he said this because I've kind of um, put some words in bold and I'll, I'll read it out in a moment. But for me, that's almost like a checklist of how do I build a personal brand? So he says, personal branding is the process of intentionally creating and influencing the public perception of an individual. This is done by positioning them as an authority in an industry or different, differentiating them from the competition and increasing their reputation. Um, yeah, so I guess that for me is my own personal checklist and I've, um, I'll have sort of expand on that in this presentation and I've kind of added my own um, points and observations as well. But before we get there, 
I think it's important just to um, touch on the importance of personal brand and and the opportunities that I think that can come of it. So personal brand is really important um, in um, establishing yourself as an expert, but I think it's important that however you do it, um, you need to really be authentic in, um, in how you position yourself. So yeah, establishing yourself as an expert, um, improving your chances to get new business or you know, get that promotion that you want or that dream job. Um, I think by um, establishing yourself as a certain um, thought leader or being a skilled professional in, in some sort of way, um, that's also an opportunity where personal brand can help open those doors to your career development. And I think it's also important because personal branding builds trust, um, shows commitment to a community, and uh, this can also lead to, you know, more re better relationships um, in, in your community as well. So, yeah, there's um, some really important aspects around personal brand and, and what it can bring you. Okay. All right. So how to define and communicate your personal brand? Here are some tips that I've kind of put together from um, Neil Patel's definition and then some that I've kind of thrown in as well. But essentially, um, the first point is really thinking about what you want to achieve and, and what is your purpose? Um, do you want a certain dream job? Um, do you want to position yourself in a certain way in the community as a thought leader, maybe or a subject matter expert? And I think it's important to have these goals because they'll become your North Star and they'll guide you to yeah opening doors and opportunities but I think it's important that these goals are also flexible because they can change along the way. And um, yeah, I, I remember being early in my career and I remember thinking not to invest so much in my personal brand. I didn't really think what people thought about. I didn't really care what people thought about me essentially, but I realized later on how important it is if you want to um, yeah, be noticed or um, yeah, be perceived or, or get that dream job. Um, a little bit of background about me, I was in charity and I felt it felt really hard to break out of the charity or not-for-profit mould um, and then make the transition into other industries. So I think once I started investing in my personal brand, then new opportunities came up and people saw me for what I really was um, and they just didn't judge me um, based on um, maybe where I worked previously, but I was able to showcase um, yeah other skills that I had that were transferable. So Personal brand, I think, is really important, but defining your goals will help you get there as well. So I think it's also important to, to think about your community. And um, a lot of our MVPs that I've noticed, they all have very diverse communities. Some communities, are, you know, focus around educating students and um, yeah, young professionals or even, even youth as well. Others, um, are really passionate about women in tech, for example. So, I think it. Um, I think it's important to define your audience because by understanding them, um, you'll be able to learn what platforms are they on, how do they like to consume content, what are their needs, what do they want as a community, and and how can you really fill that need. Um, so yeah, understanding your community is, I think, is really important. So I think the third um, area that I've identified is just having a, a look at who are the current leaders in the community as well. And I think that will help you position yourself. And um, I guess in a way you're kind of, yeah, seeing who's out there. Um, and by looking at who's out there, I guess there's two big, um, two big areas there. You can see what they're not doing and you can maybe identify an area that you could tap into or um, a gap in the in the community that you could really make an impact in. And secondly, I think by understanding who who else is in your community, there might be opportunities for collaboration. And if you collaborate as well, um, you know, with other other people within the community, uh, that could also open up new opportunities and really expand the impact that you're making as well.
I think another area um, is to look at, yeah, where you can make an impact. So I kind of just already said that. But, yeah, thinking about your audience, thinking about what the community looks like, where can you really make a difference? What's missing? It, it could be um, we've also got other MVPs that do things in local language. Um, not everyone has English as their first language. And, um, you know, by teaching others, in their own native language, they're really making a difference to that particular community. So really thinking about, um, yeah, where, where can you make a difference um, will also help guide you with your personal brand journey. One thing that I noticed with the MVP program um, is um, delivering value and being consistent. And that's also really important um, for personal brand, but also how your community um, interacts with you. So I think there's two key words in there, value and consistency. So if you think about value, um, to me, I think it's about being mindful about what you put out there in the community and yeah, the, the information that you're sharing. Um, because if it doesn't relate to your audience, then you're not really making an impact. So I think it's about being mindful and, and still being really authentic with what you like to do and um, whilst you're still helping the community. But then also consistency is super important because by maintaining a really healthy community, you have to engage with them and you have to, you know, yeah, uplift them. And by being constant uh, and constantly showing up, and um, being there, um, that really helps add value as well. Um, and also your network will organically grow and you'll be positioned as that thought leader um, by being consistent as well. So another area is, yeah, identifying your contribution channels. So where is your community located? How do they like to engage with information, consume information? Um, you know, are they on LinkedIn, on GitHub? Um, do they prefer to read blogs rather than listen to a podcast? Um, I think, yeah, think about the platforms that you want to use to really leverage and, and build your personal brand. But I, I really think it's important just to pick maybe one, two, three max um, platforms to use um, because if you overstretch in, in many different areas, it, it could be a lot um, to deal with, especially at the beginning, but you really want to be laser focused and, and build that community on, um, yeah, I guess, keep, keep the platform small um, and be consistent with those channels. And lastly, be authentic. And I've kind of used this word previously in other areas, but I think it's so important, just be yourself. And it has to come from the heart when it comes personal brand and and community work and and really wanting to make an impact. Um, yeah, you have to enjoy it as well. Um, so if you put your your authentic self out there, people will relate to you. And something that I learned in my fundraising days is people don't give to charities; people give to people. So if I was running a marathon, my friend would donate because I'm running the marathon, not because the charity has asked for money. I think it's the same with personal brand. People want to build a relationship with um, with that thought leader or or that person that's putting out content or um, or you know out there in the community or networking. So yeah, just be yourself and um, do what you feel is comfortable and relatable um, to you, and and it's from the heart. And one of my last points is around leaning into the community. So it's about engaging, it's about sharing and collaboration. And um, yeah, I think it's about, you know, be thoughtful with who you collaborate with, make sure it aligns to your purpose as well and your goals. Um, and yeah, just really enjoy um, the, the process as well. So they're kind of my tips to personal brand. Um, I, I really hope it doesn't sound overwhelming. Um, and I know, especially for women, it, it can be a bit daunting putting yourself out there. Um, but I, I guess I just encourage you to just take small steps um, and just maintain focus. And you don't have to do too many things. But if you, if you start small, um, things will organically grow. Um, but yeah, I, I know um, 
yeah, it, it can be overwhelming. So hopefully um, if you've got any questions, you can always just reach out to me and, and we can have a chat. Um, but I really do believe this, it's so important to, you know, build that path of personal brand um, and communicating that is is vitally important as well as position yourself as, as a leader. Um, so with that, um, I want to pass on the uh, presentation to Deepak because um, I think it's really important that we, yeah, we go through the MVP program um, and we give you also tips. So if you're thinking about, yeah, wanting to um, be nominated for the award or or maybe you're not ready at the moment, maybe it's a goal for the next 12 months, but I think we'll um, help give you some tips along the way. And, um, you know, by implementing some of those personal brand um tips and and um and tricks as well um you might really be in a great position to um to be recognized for the great work that you do so Deepak um I hope um you're free to take over yep. perfect yep, yep. I've been, uh, great uh, I I personally got a lot of tips from your personal branding session as well so I'm going to be implementing a lot of those myself I think it was quite useful um, but thank you uh, for um, uh, for for the lead up to this because I think this is now a lot more relevant to people on the call uh, in terms of how this is all these multiple journeys that they have as a professional comes together, right? So, um, like like Elizabeth mentioned, uh, we're going to take the next few minutes talking about the MVP program and what it means to Microsoft uh, and what should it mean to you um, as a potential candidate. Um, the the format that we use for this is pretty fluid. Uh, we usually don't have an agenda. This the this is based on some of the calls that we do for new nominees um, who uh, who are interested in the MVP program. We usually take the time to talk to them before they even apply, uh, for a couple of reasons. One, um, the MVP program uh, is about close to 30 years old. We're going to be turning officially 30 next year. Um, and over the years, it's evolved a lot. We've, uh, we've improved as a program. We've fine-tuned our focus based on what the market demands uh, and so on and so forth. And there is no single place uh, that we that we've captured all this evolution in. Um, so it's interesting to walk people through that so they know what the current state of the program is and what is expected of you as an, as an applicant. Um, and secondly, uh, which probably is the more important reason for, for uh, people like Elizabeth and I is that the MVP program is really a people program. So this is about the people who, who it's, I mean, the program is, uh, is consistent of the people who actually make up the program, right? So we want to know the people who are applying for the program. We want the people who are applying for the program to know us as people as well. And then that's how we, the program becomes a lot more uh, personal. So we take this as an opportunity to also establish that personal connect, right? So, so with that preamble, um, let me first talk about what the whole um, MVP program uh, means to Microsoft, right? So and who, who are these MVPs? Um, so the Microsoft MVP program was created to foster a, a, a much closer relationship with uh, the community of users that our products cater to. Uh, this was important to us at my, on multiple levels. Uh, we wanted to, we, we as, a, as a software company, believe that our products are only as good as our users make them out to be. So we want to make sure we hear from you often. And uh, we also make sure that we, uh, we involve you in the whole product development process so that way our products are better catered to, um, to your needs. Uh, now, while at that, we also discovered that the best way to connect with the broader community is through community leaders like yourself, uh, all of you on the call, because you act as centers of gravity um, who bring your respective communities together. So regardless of what you do, whether you're a blogger or you're a meetup owner or you're a speaker or whatever you do, uh, what you essentially do is bring together people who share a common interest and act as a thought leader where you are imparting knowledge as well as the passion that you carry for the technology to people around you. And we felt that as a company that makes those technologies that you're so proud of, it's our responsibility to, uh, to reach out, acknowledge, and thank you for what you do. Because what you do is, is pretty much uh, a voluntary uh, uh, role that nobody is demanding of you, and yet you do it consistently. It takes a lot to wake up on a Saturday morning and go and organize a meetup when you'd rather be doing anything else, right? It, it takes a lot to uh, stay up after a long day at work and write that one blog that's been on the top of your mind when you'd rather you know, catch up uh, on, a, on a late night flick and go to bed. 
And yet each one of you do that every single day, every single weekend. And we thought it's our responsibility to, first of all, thank you for doing that. Because uh, thanks to you, many lives are being changed in the community. And apart from the thanks, we also want to be a part of that whole change, right? So that's what the MVP program really is. Uh, it's a way for us to acknowledge and congratulate community leaders for being the awesome individuals that each of you are, as well as a one-year-long programmatic engagement that you have with Microsoft through the course of which we build better products, we make the community a better place, and we we'll land up changing lives together, right? So essentially, the MVP program is a collection of individuals uh, who are a technical experts who are extremely knowledgeable about our products um, and have real-time uh, working knowledge of what our products mean to the markets that they cater to. Uh, they are not just uh, they're not just experts on today's technologies, but they are also one of the early adopters. They are they are true technical advocates who are always looking out for better ways on uh, how to do things, as well as are always um, as what we call as a cutting edge of what's coming up next. And they're usually the first ones to learn adopt it, and then also share it back to their followers. But more importantly, all this knowledge that they're, they're accumulating, they're equally as passionate in sharing that with, with the community, right? Uh, they all, they want to, it's, it's a journey that they don't want to do all by themselves. It's a journey that they want to take all their followers along as well, much like each one of you on the call, right? So uh, essentially, the program is meant to recognize people who are technical experts and who voluntarily share the information with their their networks, right? Um, other than that, the MVP program is not um, uh, is not an obligatory position. So you're not expected to be an official spokesperson for the product. You're not expected to be someone who uh, you know who's who's considered as I mean who's compelled to say uh, you know only the positive things about the product. Or you're not expected to be uh, an official uh, ambassador, if you will, right? It, the objective is to be a super user who's passionate about the product and is willing to share whatever they know um, to with, with their community and be able to take them on that journey of upscaling as well, right? Um, now, the MVP award, like I mentioned, is, is meant to recognize people on the basis of their technical expertise. So the award structure is also built on that, on those lines itself. So we have 14 award technology structures, as we call them. Uh, what you see on the slide right now, you will also find it on the MVP uh, official site. Uh, there, there's a tab that reads Explore, and under the Explore tab, you'll find a page that says MVP Award Technology Structure, where you'll find all of these listed. Now, the reason I called out that page specifically is because I'd like you to spend some time on that page before you even before you even decide which award category you want to apply for the MVP Award. In. The reason being, under each of these award technology areas or award categories as we call them, you'll find a whole bunch of finer points called as cat contribution areas. So each of these areas, be it Microsoft Azure or AI, for example, are broken down into smaller topics within that larger product area that allows you to choose which one you want to be a specialist in. Because we clearly understand that each of these award categories are too broad for anyone to establish breadth expertise in. So we give you an opportunity to actually pick out which parts of these platforms or which, um, which which aspect of this product that or this larger suite of products that you want to establish your expertise in, right? So I encourage you to look at the contribution areas in detail because consciously you'll see a, some, some of the contribution areas repeating across multiple award categories. For example, if you're, if you're talking about containers, you'll find them listed under Microsoft Azure, you'll find them listed under developer technologies, and you'll also find them listed under um, uh, cloud and data center management. Now that's by that's by design because we realize that usually when you're talking about a particular product, you also cater to a particular uh, use case or a particular audience or in a particular scenario, and we want to make sure you're associated with the product in that scenario. So we actually land up um, giving you the opportunity to be influential in that circle and not necessarily force fitting you into something that's um, you know that's that that kind of is not very relevant to what you do, right? So I encourage you to start with the contribution areas. And then use that to identify which award category you belong to, depending on that contribution area, right? Now, once you do that, um, the process is, as you can see on the slide there right now, um, we, uh, we, we currently accept MVP nominations uh, only, through, only through two sets of individuals. 
either Microsoft full-time employees or current MVPs. The reason is, like I mentioned earlier, this is a people program. So we want to know the people who become a part of the program. And the assumption is that if you're, uh, if, if, if a Microsoft employee or an MVP knows you, they can validate uh, your, um, you know, your, uh, your ability to make value of the MVP program, as well as the program, uh, you know, getting more value from, uh, from someone like you. So once, um, once the person is convinced that uh, you can become an MVP, uh, I mean, you're, you're eligible to be an MVP, uh, the first thing they do is go onto the website and initiate a form for you, uh, which will reach you once they answer a few questions about how they know you. Once the form reaches you, uh, you as a nominee are expected to um, quickly fill up this form with, um, with basically three sets of uh, details. One is identifiable information about yourself. How do we contact you? How do we know you? Uh, what are your social coordinates, et cetera? Second are a set of four open-ended community questions, which is for us to help you understand who you are as a community leader. Now, you might want to note that these are not, um, these are not, uh, these are not uh, evaluatory questions, so to speak, where you know you you will make it or break it depending on the answer to these questions. Because this is for us to know you better. There is no right answer or wrong answer to this. These open-ended questions are going to help us understand you better as a community leader, the value that you will bring to the program. And the third set of details, which is probably the most important, are the list of contributions that you have done to the community in the last twelve months, right? And here's where I probably take an additional minute uh, talking to you about what constitutes this uh, this list. So this list can be a list of all the things that you have done outside your day's job on a voluntary basis to enable your community. There are no silver bullets. Uh, people usually uh, ask us if uh, being a blogger or being a speaker or being a meetup owner will increase your chances of being an MVP. There is no such, uh, uh, there, is no, there is no such formulae. There are no such preferred contribution types. Uh, we accept uh, any any contribution that enables you to be a good community leader to your community. So it's a relationship that you have with them personally, and we don't want to get in the way of that, right? So as long as it's measurable, and as long as uh, we are able to back it up with some evidence, because the people who are going to review you don't know you personally, so they might want to know the impact of your uh, uh, your community your community contributions through these two, right? Now on that note, um, it's also not a, entirely about the numbers. Uh, so 40 blogs are not always better than 20 blogs. Uh, what we usually tell people is we we try to understand what constitutes those 40 blogs or 20 blogs before deciding how impactful it is, uh, because we want to make sure that uh, we recognize your diverse situation that you come from, depending on the, the, the size of the uh, audience that you have access to, depending on the kinds of things you do, depending on generally the way you, you show impact to your community, right? And, and, and here's where we again receive uh, questions from people saying, what do you mean by community impact, right? What, how do I define my community impact? And that's where I usually tell people this thing, your community impact is what the community will miss you for if you were to stop doing it today. That shows the value that you've been delivering to the community, and that's what we would like to know, right? So when you're filling those 12 uh, months worth of contributions, I would like you to keep that in mind where you're actually trying to project that impact to us, right? So once you do that, uh, we as CPMs, uh, people like Elizabeth and I and uh, 13 of our other colleagues around the world, depending on where you're applying from, will do a review of your, um, of your um, uh, application and then write what we call as a summary of why we would like to get you approved. That then gets uh, submitted for uh, a tripartite voting uh, scheme where uh, we have people from the product group that's associated with the category that you're applying for, uh, as well as what we call as a business group lead who, who's basically a, a cross-section of the engineering team as well as the relevance of the product to the market and then the CPMs who are us. So the, the combination of our three votes um, is what decides the award, right? And um, uh, the... In terms of the cycle, uh, we have uh, we have awards given out every month. So on the first of every month, we announce the set of MVPs for that particular month. But every MVP who gets into the program is uh, is, is is subject to an annual review at the end of their term. And this usually, or at, at the moment, is between the first of April to the 30th of June, which is our annual renewal period. So every MVP who gets into the program, regardless of whatever time they get into the year, um, is, is eligible for a renewal at that particular uh, hour, except for the ones who come in after October, because the duration is uh, very little. So for you uh, who come in after October 1st, you basically get renewed for the next year automatically, right? So, um, so that's on the cycle. Again, I don't want to delve too deep into that. We can always have uh, separate calls if you need more details on that. 
but what I would like to touch upon next is what we call as a community contribution, um, because again, a lot of people have uh, have have asked for uh, assistance on what we qualify as good community contributions among us. So uh, like what uh, is mentioned on the slide, and I think I also saw a, a message from Priyanka on the chat box. Um, so contributions can include anything that you do to enable your community, including, again, not limited to blogs that you write, books that you've uh, made available for people to uh, to consume either digitally or in, uh, in print. Um, it could be open source code, um, that you've uh, you've uh, you know you're shared through GitHub or any of these other platforms. Um, it could be conferences or or public uh, speaking opportunities that you've taken where you've uh, you've gone up and spoken to people about the technology, um, or it could be any of the digital content uh, uh, methods that people use today. It could be videos, it could be podcasts, or it could be any of those uh, those social media tools that are local to your country as well. I know in some countries TikTok is more popular than something else, so we also uh, take into account that right, which is very contextual in nature. But the most important thing is that we expect these contributions to be voluntary. And what does voluntary mean? It means that there is no monetary uh, value uh, that anybody is directly making from those initiatives. Uh, not just your day's job, but it's also something that could directly put money on the table. For example, if you were to run a conference that is a paid conference that's actually profit generating, then obviously that wouldn't be a community a contribution, right? Um, so that is um, that is something that uh, we usually, uh, you know, uh, uh, tell people that saying uh, a community contribution is something that you're doing voluntarily out of your own, uh, out of your own choice and which does not involve direct revenue generation for anybody involved, for you, for the person attending or for Microsoft, right? So that's, uh, that's the uh, uh, that's the definition of a community uh, contribution according to us. Um, I've already told you about the uh, the um, uh, the term that we we follow. It's since it's an annual award, uh, we follow a term of twelve months. Uh, mm -hmm. More importantly, what we look for across the twelve months is apart from variety of contributions, we also look for consistency. How often do you do it, and is there any pattern to that thing? Because we don't want uh, we don't want it to be something that you're being forced to do. So consistency shows what you are naturally bound to do as a community leader, and we want to recognize that. Um, and also, uh, apart from just listing it, like I mentioned earlier, please take a moment to highlight your impact. For example, if there is if you are the only person doing that particular thing for that particular community, we'd like to hear that more than the numbers. And more than uh, you know, probably some other finer details that you might have mentioned there. So please also use the um, the different ways in which you can do that. There are there are uh, description. Uh, there are a lot of other things that are there uh, which you can use to talk about the impact that you've done, right? And uh, also these calls that Elizabeth and I will organize with with you whenever you're getting nominated are great ways for you to come and talk about it as well, right? So make sure you call out these things, right, and give us the ability to understand your impact. Um, and uh, be as articulate uh, in terms of what is the extent of the impact as well. Like I said, although it's not about numbers, uh, the numbers help us understand the extent of your impact, right? So all we want to know is whether it's two or 200 or 2,000 or two lakhs, right? That's it. Uh, we're never going to tell you saying, oh, we have a benchmark of 200. You're at 140, you're 60 short. Let's talk in two months. That's a conversation that none of us will ever have with you. It's all about how, what impact you've had and at what scale, right? So that's all we would like to know. Uh, and also, please make sure it's verifiable. Uh, please make sure that uh, the accuracy is in place because otherwise it becomes difficult for us to explain um, why a particular number looks as a certain number if you're not able to validate it, right? So also double check that before submitting. Again, these are finer details that you need to keep in mind when you're uh, applying, but we can always take that uh, on a later basis when you're uh, ready for it. Uh, but in short, um, here are the MVP benefits that uh, you get at the end of this, uh, this entire process. Uh, so through the course of the one year that you're going to be with us, our objective is to make you a better version of the community leader that we found in you. So we want to make you a better technical expert than you are. We also want to give you uh, more abilities to be a better community leader uh, than what you currently are. So all the benefits that you see on this uh, slide, and there are over 40 such benefits, um, they're all designed to make you a better technical expert as well as a better community leader. So you have advantages in terms of uh, the recognition you get, uh, the kind of uh, uh, assets that you can use to, to to establish your credibility in the market. Um, you also, like I said, are, are, will be connected directly to the product teams. You'll be part of a product roadmap conversations. Um, you'll get, uh, since you're going to be under NDA, you'll get information 
uh, that's about six to eight months before the consumption for the rest of the world, right? So, and you'll actually get to be a part of that entire process. Uh, we also have an annual MVP summit, uh, which gets you up close to all the product teams that you're um, uh, that you're going to be working with. Uh, we prior to the pandemic, we it used to be an in-person uh, one week or a five day kind of a, a summit at our Redmond campus. Uh, we've switched to a more virtual uh, model after the pandemic struck in, but it's still one opportunity for you to to get together with the product teams and actually talk about what's going on um, over the next year. Um, we also have a lot of uh, free licenses and a lot of uh, um, uh, sponsored subscriptions for you. That's going to help you uh, learn better as well as share better, including LinkedIn Premium, um, including um, access to universities uh, like Zamorin University or Plural Site and a whole bunch of other things. So uh, we'll probably get into more details into the benefits at a much later point, but. Uh, just know that it's meant to make you a better technology uh, expert as well as a better community leader, right? So with that, um, that there's a, so those are some dates, uh, some important uh, next steps for you in case your uh, things. There are no specific, um, you know, to do or, or by this date kind of thing that we follow. Uh, however, uh, we are always available to, um, uh, you know, to be to be. I mean, like what Elizabeth mentioned, there is no. Uh, hard and fast date by which you should be ready. So what we would like you to use this conversation for is to evaluate where you are in that journey. Some of you may be closer to the date of application. Some of you may be a little farther. Don't let that disappoint you. Make sure you work with um, Elizabeth of uh, Code Without Barriers, Elizabeth uh, on my team, uh, myself as well, depending on which part of uh, Asia you're from. And we are more than happy to keep this conversation active and continue working with you till you are ready to be nominated. Right, and uh, we we already we always have a lot of opportunities that we can always involve you in. So uh, it's only a small ask away, and also uh, you'll get an opportunity to talk to Priyanka and Anj uh, right after this. They are fantastic people to stay in touch with as well, apart from the other MVPs. So maybe also follow them, see the kind of things they do. It might inspire you to also come up with creative ways that you can do it. They might have some opportunities, but they might want to involve you in as well, and this may be a good opportunity for you to to actually make those new networks. All right, so I think I'm a little over time here, but uh, we just wanted to make sure um, we clarify most of the commonly asked questions. Uh, if there's anything else specific besides uh, what I already covered, um, happy to take it here, or I don't know if, uh, um, Elizabeth, I don't know if this this time specific for this in the later part of the call, but um, yeah, back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Deepak, for sharing and Elizabeth as well to you. And uh, so, yeah, ladies, um, this is a chance and I, I see some uh, gentlemen joining in as well uh, today. But uh, yeah, this is your chance to please uh, ask your questions in uh, in the chat box. Anything that uh, you might be curious about and uh, I'll take the opportunity to uh, ask away some of the questions that were submitted in advance. Uh, so I know there is most of the questions Deepak think uh, thankfully you just answered on uh, on yeah so what it takes to yeah how to become an MVP what it takes to be an MVP what are the prerequisites so ladies I hope you did note that down right. and we'll be sharing uh, the recording as well but um, I do see another I question guess, on the chat box Elizabeth yeah. I think someone asked yes. if uh, they should keep track of the numbers themselves when they submit the application. I'm assuming uh, you're referring to the increase in your contribution numbers from the time you submit versus the time it's taken for review. Um, very, very valid question. Um, a very, very intelligent question as well. Uh, so generally, uh, okay, that's one point that I missed mentioning earlier on. So generally our process from application to award uh, decision is a maximum of 90 days. Uh, which is three months. So within three months, uh, we will finish your process of review and uh, you, we will tell you either that you've been awarded or we will send you back with some feedback that you can improve and come back and reapply. Either of this will happen within three months. So within this three months, if you believe that there is an increase in numbers, um, you can uh, go back to your form. You can use the same link that was mentioned in your form during the time of application and you'll be allowed to um, add an additional number. You'll not be able to change what's already there. So the form doesn't allow you to modify entries that are already there, but you can add newer entries um, and, or you can add a secondary number. So let's say you've done three more contributions in those three months. You can go there and add those as new rows. 
and let's say for an existing contribution, your numbers just went up, there is a way for you to go and add secondary quantity there where you can add an additional set of numbers there uh, on the same uh, contribution uh, row. Uh, you can do that until the point where it's taken for final review. Once the form is taken for final review though, the form will not be uh, editable. So that's the point where it stops. But until then, until it's uh, there at the final voting stage, uh, you're allowed to make entries uh, to your form. I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Deepak. Elizabeth, anything you'd like to add? Nothing that I'd love to add, but I was conscious we went a bit over time and I'd love to hear from Priyanka and Ange um, because I know they've got so much experience and and they can share their um, perspectives on the MVP program and their overall experience and what they get out of it. And it may be any tips as well that they want to share. So um, I'd love to yeah, pass on to Priyanka and Ange. Maybe introduce yourself as to what award category that um, you are as well. Yeah, Ange, go first. Okay, I was just waiting. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, everyone. So I'm Ange Serbaz. All right, my, my real name is Mary Angela Serbaz, but you can call me Ange. So I'm I'm a dual MVP. So I uh, my category is business application as well as Microsoft 365 apps and services. So what I do is I'm currently working as a productivity analyst. So I uh, well, um, I'm spearheading the adoption of Microsoft 365 and Power Platform in our organization. So that's what I do. And as for some tips to be uh, to become an MVP, what I've learned is that whatever you have in your mind, like for example, if you want to do blog because you want to share what you've learned or what you, for example, you're fixing things uh, in, in your work. Like for example, oh, I found the solutions that I want to share to everyone that it doesn't available yet in the community. So you just write it and share it to everyone because you will never know that that solution might help anyone in the community. And yeah, just do it. Whatever whatever the needs here or whatever, um negative negativity thinking that you have just do it and you make mistake but it's okay um as long as what you've learned you just share it to anyone so yeah so i would say sharing is caring and um yeah that's how i started this journey thank that's you awesome. and and Yes, and Priyanka, perhaps uh, you can uh, introduce yourself and what you're doing. Hey, hi guys. Uh, so this is Priyanka here, and I'm a Microsoft MVP for AI. Um, and currently, I am uh, leading the uh, business uh, uh, AI IoT business out of Southeast Asia for Avanard. And I'm also, you know, uh, a mentor and. Uh, uh, advisor at uh, Code Without Barriers, so under uh, the umbrella of which we are helming today's event. Um, yep, so for me, uh, the MVP program opened up a lot of uh, uh, doors, opportunities. So although I was very active in the tech space uh, for over a decade, uh, with the help of MVP program, actually, you know, you get a lot of uh, uh, mind share with like-minded individuals, people, and uh, it, it opens uh, this wide vista of possibilities for you to further uh, grow and enrich yourself while also, you know, interacting and giving back to the community. So uh, 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 I was, you know, a siloed as a solution architect, and I thought that, you know, I was probably doing a lot of good work with AI IoT space. But when actually I became a part of the MVP program, I could really see so many different possibilities in which we can actually, you know, uh, deploy our AI IoT solutions, use it for uh, real life problem statements. You get to meet a lot of diverse people. You get to uh, hear the challenges, the real technology challenges uh, of, you know, deploying certain solutions, solving certain problems and all of the things which we speak of, right? Like sustainability, accessibility, AI for good, AI for better. 
all these things you know derived a whole uh, lot newer meaning once i got uh, associated with the mvp program um, so yeah for me it was a total you know game changer for uh, uh, for the work which i was doing for you know my uh, profile my career right and uh, of course you know uh, as ange mentioned right it's one step at a time so don't be hesitant if you have that technology passion uh, but to to do something and you know to learn new things and to give back to the community uh, just uh, you know don't shy uh, away from writing blogs or making your opinions known it could be just a small you know linkedin update of what you did so you know probably open ai gpt was uh, chat gpt was released and people are experimenting with gpt so don't uh, shy away from you know posting all these the tech updates of what technology are you experimenting implementing way then what are some of the uh, newer things which you want to uh, uh, you know uh, 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 solve or experiment with and uh, that is how you get started actually and from there on you know associate with the tech communities associate with the tech groups could be online could be in person so after the uh, pandemic and during the pandemic uh, i think there was ample evidence that you know we can uh do all of these events and uh, you know technology sharing online as well right so reactor events are there reactor pop ups are there via which you can associate yourself with uh, uh you know tech communities remotely as well and still uh, do your uh, community contributions right so uh, reach out reach out to these fantastic uh, ladies and gentlemen out here who are there readily to uh, you know support and guide you and uh, definitely uh, we me my, myself elizabeth both elizabeth and jar deepak are here to support you for whatever uh, uh, the whatever it takes for you to onboard the uh, mvp journey so i see there is a few questions coming in in the chat box so i guess one of the clarities was whether uh, how does the nomination work when the nominee is in a different region and community engagement is in a different region? So that's also quite similar to uh, Apichit's question. Yeah, so does Priyanka or Ange, do you engage with communities outside of where you reside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do. We do. Right. Uh, so we do. So like, for example, there was this. Uh, so we have meetup groups, right? Uh, you can just download the meetup application and there are these meetup groups for every area. So let's say uh, right now uh, the meetup group which we operate in Singapore also caters to events which we do in Malaysia. If they if those guys want to come and speak on our forum, same way, you know, I have hosted a lot of Australia MVPs on Singapore user groups as well uh, remotely. So definitely definitely i mean you know your contributions are not uh, uh, region specific uh, yeah. we uh, mvp is all throughout and tech uh, communities all throughout uh, we are we, we still share uh, synergies no no issues in that thank you for, uh, yeah priyanka and yeah i know there's um there's a few more questions coming in but i do want to take a group photo uh, while uh, most of us are here, so if uh, yeah, if ladies, you can all turn on your cameras so that we can uh, take a group picture. I'll I'll move us into a together mode. Great to see you all. I guess I'll so. yeah. Oh, I'd love to also get a hand raise of like who feels like they want to yeah take the next step and uh, and yeah look at exploring the opportunities to be nominated. I'd love to see hands raised. It could be in the next three months or twelve months or um, but yeah, I'd love to see. That's great. Wow, nice. That's fantastic. So I'd love like the next steps, I guess, like I'll share my email address as well again in the chat, but um, depending on what region you're from, contact Deepak or myself and we can have really one-on-one -on -one conversations to see where you're at. 
Um, and then I'll give you a spreadsheet, um, just like that last slide that we had of that table. And that could help us gauge if you're ready or you might need to build a few more contributions. Um, but I guess one thing I also want to emphasize is some MVPs, and once they've been awarded, it, it might have taken them three times to be nominated. And they just kept persisting and they kept refining what they did. So um, sometimes it is a bit of a, a journey and a process and we need patience as well. So um, yeah, that's probably another tip as well that I want to leave you with that um, not everyone gets accepted straight away and it could take time through that process. But Deepak and I will guide you and, and we've got other MVPs in the community that you can connect with as well and, and get mentoring from too. Thank you, Elizabeth. And uh, yeah, I'm waiting for a few more faces. I know that uh, some might be sh camera shy, but uh, let us know if we should uh, wait yeah, for you to turn second. on. <laughs> but um, OK, I'll take one now. Oh, yeah, we have. I see someone else is joining. Don't be shy. OK, no. OK, then I'll do it in. Uh, one, two, three, and chat. Okay, Excellent. awesome. Can thank you, you so much. <laughs> yes, I will. I will. And thank you all for joining in today. And uh, yeah, we'll share the recording with all of you. And I know there must be a ton of um, ton more questions all of you want to ask uh, to all of the yeah to Priyanka, to Ange, to Elizabeth, and to Deepak. So. Yeah, please make sure. Uh, yeah, we we will follow up with you all and you will be able to share your questions in the feedback form as well. And you have the contact of all of the speakers. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you all so much for your time today. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank and you all so the much, best everyone. to all the aspirants.